Hi everyone, it's meteorologist Joe Martucci from the Buffalo News' sister publication at the Press of Atlantic City and a colleague of Don Paul's as well. Here to put in context this historic blizzard of 2022. We have had blizzard conditions for 37 hours. That means visibilities were at or under a quarter of a mile. We had wind gusts 35 miles an hour and there was either blowing or in this case, falling snow. This was our longest blizzard condition streak since 1950. This was a bomb cyclone, which is home to some of our strongest storms that we see in western New York. And there were more deaths in this storm, unfortunately, than the blizzard of 1977 here. Snowfall totals continue to come in. Williamsville takes the top spot at 51.9 inches of snow. Buffalo Airport at 51.5 here. Lockport in Niagara County, 28.2 and over in Cataraugus, this was the highest total in Cataraugus itself with 4.4 inches of snow. This storm was due in part to the polar vortex. It's a large upper level area of cold air that typically likes to sit at the poles. And when it does so and sits at the poles, well, the large pressure differences keep the jet stream straighter in the cold air trapped in the north. Now, what happened sometimes and what happened this time was that the jet stream weakened and it allowed that colder air to move first into the Northern Plains, and then into Western New York, bringing snow and cold. And we also had a bomb cyclone, which is known as bombogenesis. That's the official term for this. Now, don't take this storm's location verbatim here. It's just an example. But bombogenesis is typically caused by a clash between very cold air as well as warmer air here. And we certainly had that with the East Coast, the immediate East Coast, well above average, and then to our West, well below average, well below the average for both Buffalo as well as areas to the west as well. That large temperature gradient leads to rapid intensification. And to have a bomb cyclone, you need an air pressure drop of 24 millibars or greater within 24 hours here. And again, it can produce very heavy precipitation like we saw. And here's a look at that lake effect band that ripped through Erie County specifically. This is from... Saturday night all the way through what we had on Tuesday here. You see that snow band staying fairly consistent in Niagara and in Erie County, especially all the way until about Tuesday early afternoon. Snowfall totals did shift each day as that band shifted. You see on Friday, Buffalo 18.8 inches of snow. We're taking now to Saturday here. Buffalo still seeing double digit snowfall, though. Niagara County saw actually the bullseye of the snow with a little more of a southwesterly orientation off the lake here. We go to Sunday. Buffalo actually stayed on just the northern extent of that heaviest band. Hamburg saw the most here on our Sunday. And then Monday, Buffalo again took the top spot. But you're seeing Buffalo, with the exception of Sunday, staying near the top of the snowfall charts here. And then Tuesday, it was more of lighter snow that still fell in did unfortunately add up. Now, when you compare this storm to the blizzard of 1977, my colleague Don Paul tells me that 1977's blizzard was more of a ground blizzard, meaning there was very heavy winds, but not much falling snow. Most of the snow was blowing around. In this case, we had the falling snow. So you have the combination of new snow actually coming to the ground and that snow getting blown around as well and unfortunately creating deaths and devastation here in western New York.